my friends are all over the world. Well, miss, I guess I'll be on my way now. My high school was an international IB school where most of my friends studied university abroad, including me. So coming home can actually feel really lonely because most of them aren't here in the Philippines anymore. But sometimes I get lucky because my friends will come to visit me. Like now. Good morning. It is our first day here in Bangalore in the Philippines. It's really early. It's like 8 a.m. We were going to go diving, so me and my sister, she still is, but I'm probably not because I woke up and I wasn't feeling too well. I was looking up like, oh, should you dive while you're fatigued? It was like, mm, maybe not. Yeah, I chickened out. To be completely honest, I have been a little scared of scuba diving. I think in general, I just have a maybe phobia of the ocean and it's totally irrational as many fears are, but I think the ocean is just so unfamiliar to me that it, it's, it's just the unknown, the fear of the unknown. I really, really do want to explore the beautiful marine life I know exists here in the Philippines, but I think there's no need for me to rush into this. Anyways, I've got a few hours before my friends from Singapore arrive, so I want to share with you something I've been journaling about lately. Long distance relationships. And not just romantic ones, but also friendships. As an international student who studied abroad in the States, I knew I'd eventually go home after four years. I'd have to say goodbye to all the friends I made, and knowing this honestly made it really hard for me to make close friends because I thought, What's the point of getting close to people if I'll have to let them go? If it's all going to end, why even begin? It felt perfectly rational to me that the most painless option was to not get close so I would not have to experience the inevitable sadness of separation. But that also meant I would never experience the deep joy that comes from intimate relationships and knowing others deeply. I didn't want fear to rule my life. Thankfully, and praise God, but by my senior year, I had wonderful friends I met who taught me how to open up and be a little braver. And when graduation came, I cried for many days because I really felt the loss of my friends and I accepted that I might not ever see some of them again. I truly did not expect that one year later, my college friends would be visiting me here today in the Philippines. Y'all, my friends are almost here. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna wait outside and then uh, when they come here, I'm gonna scare them. Now I'll just set up the camera. Okay, I'm out because they're gonna come soon. But in the meantime, let me give you a little room slash hotel tour. We're at this place called the Bahal Sea Resort. We're basically each in these little villas. So this one is the one my sister and I are staying at. We will go in. Hello. So come in. It's very simple. We just have a double bed desk, wardrobe, and then the bathroom. And then you go outside and you have a nice outdoor area. I was here this morning journaling. And then if you look out, that is the check-in restaurant, swimming pool, and then there are a bunch more villas down there. Let me take you guys. So just all the villas stretched out there. Oh my gosh, I see them. I'm gonna hide. I don't know if I'm scared though. I'm gonna sit by these steps and then I'm gonna set this camera up and then I'll slowly walk over. You wanna say hi to the vlog? Yeah. That's so nice actually. This is really nice. I didn't realize the beach was here also. This is nicer than another existence of the Thank you. Find that I get one um iced matcha latte. Here's one drinks. Yeah, uh can I get the mango dragon fruit? Yeah, it's not a dragon. I know. Thank you. The law is too. Quick, quick Filipino. But you can get around pretty easily. It's been easy to get around, like, just. Yeah. 
I think it helps a lot. Yeah, 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 they do. Yeah, dude, it's like national language is English, and we're the third largest English speaking. Like, yeah. After lunch, we caught a tuk-tuk to go to Nepaling Reef to go snorkeling, and oh my gosh, I was so nervous. I just saw the vast ocean and the choppy dark waters, and I was like, um, are you sure that's safe? In the end, peer pressure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I got a life vest, and pray to God, and we were off. It was beautiful. Hi guys, so I'm in, uh, I'm at Alona Beach right now. It's, I know there's some music, there's some vibes going on here. I think this is a pretty popular night spot. It's pretty bustling. Uh, my friends went to go snorkeling. I am pretty tired from today already, so I'm just chilling, vibing at the beach. I ended up going snorkeling because I was like, you know what, I kind of want to check stuff out. So I was like, whatever. But I was so scared. Like my friends were kind of laughing because I was like, oh my gosh, the water looks so choppy. I I am just so scared. Like, are there sharks? Like, I don't know anything, but it was all fine. Like, praise God. Like, it was beautiful. We saw eels. We saw a sea turtle. I'm happy to just have some time to relax a little and soak it all up. While my friends go snorkeling, let's continue our discussion on long distance friendships because this trip made me realize something ironic. If I had never decided to pursue these friendships in college because I was too scared of losing them, I would have actually lost them. But it's because of how close we got that we're here now actually wanting to see each other traveling across countries to visit each other. Later this year, I'm actually going to go to Singapore to visit them. So subscribe if you want to stay along for the journey. After the sunset, we were all really hungry. So we decided to get ice cream. Yep, dessert before dinner. Then we ate at a Filipino restaurant where my sister and I ordered some of our favorite Filipino dishes like pork sisig, lechon, bangos, garlic rice, and of course, halo halo for round two of dessert. We also just walked around the beach after and found a quiet spot to talk, catch up, get drinks. This was actually my sister's first time meeting my friends too, but it's funny because they're actually closer to age than I am. It's midnight and we're heading back. No, we were there for literally five, six hours. And the next day we'd have to get up early because we had a countryside tour at 8 a.m. But I'm about to pass out, so get some rest y'all. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning, we are starting the day strong with my favorite Filipino breakfast combo. We've got pork tocino and longanisa for my friends and I got corned beef with garlic rice, eggs and mangoes. We headed out 10 minutes late but I assured my friends that this was early by Filipino time. We drove over to the main island, Bohol, where we got ATVs and did this beautiful tour through the famous chocolate hills and rice terraces. I know, you guys might be wondering, why are they called chocolate hills? Well, they're known to be brown, and apparently that's only during the dry season. And we went when it was pouring rain, so that makes it the vibrant green that you see now. After we climbed the 200 steps made of bamboo, we reached this viewpoint and our tour guide gave us this broom and took the randomest photos of us, but I think it's a tradition. After we climbed down, we drank some fresh buko juice, which means young coconut, and just talked for a little bit. We then stopped by a tertiary conservatory because I learned that Philippine tertiaries are an endangered species and one of the smallest primates in the world. There was a butterfly garden next door that we checked out, then my friend spotted worm ice cream, and I was like, bruh, please no, but I ended up trying it too because that is what happens when you travel with friends who are way more adventurous than you. <laughs> Anyways, I thought we were getting lunch now, but we still had one more spot. The Bilar Man-Made Bamboo Forest. It was so peaceful, but... At this point, I think I was getting overstimulated and thinking, this trip is really packed with sights. And it's funny because I used to love traveling like this with activities packed left, right, no break. But then I realized at the end of the trip, I barely felt like I experienced anything because every moment passed so quick and I never got to immerse myself in it. This is probably why our next activity was my favorite the Lubok River Cruise. Well, miss, I guess I'll be on my way now. You just give me a...
we just relaxed on that boat for three hours. We ate delicious Filipino buffet, listened to incredible live music from the 80s, tried Filipino dances like tinikling, and just bathed in the beauty of this jungle river. After the cruise, I felt so refreshed and ready to finish our final sights of the day, Baklayon Church, which is one of the Philippines' oldest Catholic churches made from coral stones, and the Blood Compact Shrine, which sealed the friendship between Spaniards and Filipinos by pouring their blood from a cut and into a drink like wine, which they would all toast to. At this point, we successfully completed the tour, woo! So we headed back to meet up with my sister for dinner at the Bahol Bee Farm. Before the trip ended, I wanted to just debrief the trip a little because you've probably seen these people throughout the video, but we never really introduced them. So do you guys want to introduce yourselves and how we met? Yeah, sure. So I'm Josiah. I met Katie in freshman year during, during an entrepreneurship event uh, at college. I'm Zenas. Uh, I met Katie at a common class that we had uh, through a mutual friend. Oh. <laughs> I'm Kim, I'm Katie's older sister, and I met her at the hospital the day my mom gave birth to her. I have four questions I want to ask you guys, and the first is just, did you guys come into this trip with any expectations, and what were they? I think personally, I, I tried to minimize my expectations before any trip. But I think for this trip, I really wanted to, I guess, dive during during this trip. So I was looking into it and I expected like clear waters and a lot of uh, marine life. Generally, like this trip, like exceeded my expectations in that aspect. Yeah. Yeah, I think similar to Josiah. Like I didn't have much expectation for the trip. Thought that like it would be a good opportunity to like catch up. So I thought that maybe the expectation there would be, you know, like some level of deep conversations along the trip, which kind of happened. Well, so. <laughs> happened a lot. <laughs> yeah. I think I was super excited because this was the first time. Well, first of all, you guys are coming to the Philippines like for the first time, like, and we haven't seen each other in a while, like in a year and then six months since we graduated. I was bringing all my sisters, so I was like, this will be an interesting mix to throw into the, the whole dynamic. I was also pretty confident that it would be a good trip. I just didn't know what kind of trip it would be. Like, would it be like super stacked or more laid back? But we planned this with so much thought that I felt like we were all in line. I think Katie had told me about you guys a little bit beforehand and you guys seemed chill. I thought it would be like a good time. Did anything surprise you this trip? I think what surprised me was kind of your relationship together. Um, oh, the both of us? Yeah, because never really met like a sister dynamic um, this sort, I think, because you guys are really close. And whenever I thought of like siblings, usually there's some level of like, oh, she's my younger sis or she's my older sis. And it's somewhat like compartmentalized. And the sister and friend thing mm -hmm. is something I've not seen mm -hmm. that often. Like it feels very like organic, mm -hmm. and natural. And doesn't feel like it's forced. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's, me. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Which guess it's weird. Like Katie and us, like we're like college friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Josiah and I being a bit older because of like national service in Singapore. Yeah. And closer to age with Kim. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, that was really that was so funny. I was telling my sister, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah, we're like two friends from Singapore and Wait, they're actually your age. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm right in the middle of the both of them. I'm like three years kind of younger. <laughs> Back home, I only have one sibling. Mm -hmm. So the idea of having like multiple siblings and <laughs> treating them as uh, friends, mm -hmm. it's, quite, it's quite interesting to understand. And uh, how, like, despite your shared experiences, how your characters are also quite different. Mm -hmm. oh. I think the level of engagement also surprised me. Like, I don't think I expected to reach the level of mm -hmm. depth that we all did during some of the talks that we had. And they also went quite late in the night. <laughs> Thought we would all just like be like, let's go to sleep at like midnight. Sleep <laughs> <laughs> like, at 3 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> Even now, as an adult, I don't imagine many of my peers like being willing or like having the energy of, or time to have that level of depth of conversation. But I think that was quite surprising. And then also seeing Katie, because like I know she's mentioned to me that among her friend groups, like she's people often tell her she's like mature and she's like very wise and stuff like that. I think like last night when you were talking to Josiah, that was like a thought that I had because I was like, hmm, if I didn't know Katie and this conversation was just happening like on the side and I was like listening to it, like what would my impression of Katie be? Mm -hmm. And I do feel like you're a lot more tempered, a lot less like loud. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> like at home, I feel like your energy is like all over the place. <laughs> Here you're much more like controlled and like composed. And then you have a lot of like head nods and like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, hey, like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but I'm like, I can see why people would have that impression of you. And also, like, having like three older siblings maybe influences your thought. Oh, yeah. yeah. The last question is just then, like, overall with this trip, like, how do you think we did with organizing it? If we were to go on a trip again, which I think we should, is there anything like we do differently? What went well? This is very <laughs> retrospective. I think like it was pretty good that we had a call like earlier on, yeah. early in the process, right? To figure out our interests. I think we communicated our desires well so that uh, no one was disappointed like you know no one like really bottled up their emotions or their preferences mm -hmm. so i think i really like the transparency <laughs> this is so like good that we worked as a team because like mm -hmm. um the hotel that we initially wanted to book is actually like closed <laughs> Uh, <laughs> for two years now. Close for two years, yeah. I think like because uh, Katie and Kim live in the Philippines, we could get the help to like call the hotel, try mm. to call the hotel. I love the dynamic. I was thinking about all of us and mm. we kind of had different roles. Both of you guys, like Mr. and Josiah were more like planning, mm. like looking after the logistics and I think we're also capable of that, but when we notice like, oh, we have a lot of J's right now, so maybe some like P energy to like balance it out. From the MBTI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but generally like yeah. everyone helps think of each other and mm -hmm. all can move within a spectrum depending on what the, the group needs. So I think that was super cool. Yeah, my take on it was like fairly sim similar. I thought the first video call was good because it was a, the first time three of us called in, oh. since college actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then it was just laying out expectations. After that, the group chat was good as well. Just ironing out some of the logistics, picking the plan out of like seven different plans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, nine! We were yeah, at number nine! Nine, nine, nine different plans. Yeah. Thanks to Josiah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was very well rounded and well balanced. Like, we had a good amount of planning, but also flexibility. We had group time and then like alone time. At least for me. And then we also had like activities, but we also had just talking. And then we went to like some more like established restaurants. And then we went to like a roadside like taco store that wasn't even a really built place. It was just like tables on the side of the road. Yeah, so it was a good mix of like everything. Any any final thoughts? It's been a great trip. Yeah, yeah. really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. 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 Thank you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> nice. Thanks. That was solid.